Reflexes are one of the most important topics of neurophysiology and it has lot of clinical importance. In this video, I am going to tell you what is reflex and pupillary light reflex with its clinical significance. Hey everyone, welcome back to HM Learnings. I am Harshita, the creator of HM Learnings, where students come to clear their concept and to get the study material. So I am back after a very long time and today we are going to see one of a very interesting topic and it is a very very important topic both for your theory as well as for your practical exams so uh, we are going to delve like this is one of uh, this is like the first video we are uh, we are in which we are talking about the reflex so we are going to first see that what is reflex what are the components of the reflex what is reflex arc and then we will talk in detail about one of the reflexes that is a pupillary light reflex so in that we are going to see that what is pupillary light reflex what are the components in it and what is its clinical significance so let's talk about the uh, reflex so what is reflex so you need to understand that reflex is something which is like in response to a stimulus in response to a signal there is a rapid response which is coming and this response is actually involuntary this is not something which is initiated by the willingness of a person so for example like if someone like the very common example which we uh, which we used to read in our school that if someone is touching a car and that cup is very hot that cup is having a hot tea and the cup is very hot immediately the response is going to become that is a withdrawal of the hand so here the stimulus is what the hot the high temperature and the response is what the withdrawal of the hand so this is a kind of a reflex so in response to a stimulus what has happened a particular response has came and this is what is called as a reflex which is actually happening involuntary and it is very rapid uh, as we can see that even before the person recognizes like the signal could reach the cortex and the person could realize that the cup is hot the response has came so even before the signal has the stimulus has reached or gained the conscious uh, uh, actually the con it, it has reached the cortex and the person becomes aware about the fact that the cup is hot the response of withdrawal has came so it is very rapid and it is involuntary it doesn't require the uh, conscious inputs by the cortex so reflex is involuntary it is relatively predictable that is in response to a when you touch a when you're going to touch a hot cup you are going to withdraw it so it's a predictable response which we are predicting in almost all the individuals in the normal individuals and this is a stereotype response which is a kind of a fixed response so in uh, uh, in response to a particular stimulus now stimulus has to be precise not to every stimulus the reflex is going to become so the stimulus has to be educated to get an educate response and only that is called as a reflex so um, I hope that this is understood that what is reflex now uh, we can understand that basically what is happening in the reflex is that we are showing some signal that is a stimulus and, and in response to that there is some response which is coming so there is a signal and there is a there is a stimulus and there is a response but what is happening between the stimulus and the response how does the signal is actually leading to a response is what we are uh, going to learn further so this is basically a work of a reflex arc so reflex arc is starting from the stimulus the stimulus is going to be sensed our body there are some there is after that there is basically a pathway which is there and through that pathway finally the response is going to become so how does that happen what are the structural components in this in that arc and what are the physiological mechanisms are going are carry on in this is what we are going to look on so that pathway is actually called as a reflex arc so starting from the stimulus till the response has came this has been mediated by the reflex reflex arc so reflex is mediated by a reflex arc and therefore the integrity of the reflex arc is very important for getting a reflex so if you are checking a reflex in a patient and you are not getting the reflex in that case what is happening that you have to 
think that whether the reflex arc is integrate or not so the integrity uh, is very important because the basic unit of the reflex is the reflex arc now what does the reflex arc is having so here you can see that uh, we are having a stimulus okay so here there is a stimulus suppose i am taking a stimulus as the uh, hot that is high temperature so this uh, high temperature is acting as a stimulus which is going to be sensed by a sense organ so the sense organs will be the receptors which are present on the skin so this is the first component in the reflex arc which is going to sense the stimulus now after sensing the stimulus this is going to be taken from the sense organ to the center that is the spinal cord or the brain stem now this is the efferent neuron which is taking the sensation from the periphery to the center that is the efferent neuron now in the center there could be one synapse or more than one synapse so here this diagram is showing just the one synapse so here the synapse has happened and now the efferent neuron is something which is taking the signal back from the center to the periphery so here it is going to innervate one of the like there will be neuromuscular junction and it is going to send the signal to the muscle and the response will come so here you can say that the skin receptors are there the efferent neurons which is a sensory neuron of the ascending pathway taking the impulse from here and forming a synapse in the spinal cord with the efferent neuron the efferent neuron will be the alpha motor neuron for the skeletal muscle there will be neuromuscular junction between them the muscle is going to contract and the response will be the withdrawal so this is the reflex arc okay so now there could be cranial nerve reflexes or there could be spinal nerve reflexes so usually what happens that uh, we tend to think that oh, okay the reflex is basically which is involving like whenever someone asks what is reflex we, the first thing which comes in our mind is a stress reflex stress reflex is one of the type of a peripheral nerve reflex or a spinal reflex but cranial nerve reflexes are also there which are also a a part of a reflex so here how how these two things are different is that only in terms of their efferent and efferent so if the efferent and efferent is involving the cranial nerves they that will be called as a cranial nerve reflex and even the center is going to be the brain stem so don't think always at the set whenever we talking about the reflex only one thing is coming in our mind that there is a efferent which is going to the spinal cord there is a efferent which is coming out to the spinal cord and the response so we tend to think okay the center is the spinal cord so in all the reflexes the center is going to be the spinal cord we don't think about the brain stem so brain stem is also something which is involved in the reflexes which is involved in the cranial nerve reflexes because the idea is that the reflexes are something that the, the output which is coming um, in the reflex is actually directly coming from the area at where the efferent is going it is not coming from the cortex so in that case uh, we forget that a uh, brain stem is also the area from which the input output is coming without the uh, modulation by the descending uh inputs so uh, descending inputs modulate spine uh, reflexes that's for sure that we are going to talk also but uh, this is something which is important that the f cranial nerve reflexes are also there and the peripheral nerve reflexes are also there so efferent neuron is going to be a cranial nerve in the cranial nerve reflex and their cell bodies are going to be lie in their homologous ganglia for example in the optic nerve the optic nerve is our second cranial nerve so its nuclei is there in the axon of is is the cell body of the ganglion cell olfactory is, is our first olfactory uh, is our first cranial nerve so its body is being there in the olfactory uh, uh, you know the olfactory neuron so now the efferent neuron is going to be your 
motor cranial nerves okay the center will be the brain stem and the uh, like in the case of a like if we take a, the next the reflex we are going to talk about is a pupillary light reflex so if we take the example of that the pupillary in the pupillary light reflex the efferent is a optic nerve and the efferent is going to be somehow the part of an oculomotor nerve then the example is pupillary reflex and the corneal reflex okay so in the corneal reflex also the efferent is your uh, optic nerve and your efferent is your facial nerve which is also a cranial nerve so this is a cranial nerve reflexes and peripheral nerve reflexes very common stretch reflex which we all like we know every everyone knows that the efferent neuron sensory neuron of the ascending pathway this is showing you the this diagram is actually showing you the peripheral nerve reflex or the spinal nerve reflex so here the cell body will be present of the uh, the cell body of the efferent neuron will be present in the dorsal root ganglia and efferent neuron is a alpha motor neuron which is a final common pathway to the skeleton muscle and then the center will be the spinal cord so this is something very important i want to highlight so now uh, another important point is that that we tend to think like when we read this thing we we thought that okay it is involuntary but uh, actually reflexes are modifiable the, the descending inputs we know that uh, descending inputs that is the upper motor neuron the motor cranial nerve is also a lower motor neuron and the alpha motor neuron is also a lower motor neuron so these are not only receiving the inputs from their efferents but also receiving the input puts from the cortex by the alpha uh, by the upper motor neuron so basically they are modifiable if a person is trained in such a way that how much hot it is you are not supposed to withdraw your hand that person can train themselves and that is coming because the reflexes are modifiable so this is important don't forget that reflexes are not modifiable they are modifiable but in uh, mostly they Uh, these reflexes they can be elicited now we move on to our topic which is a uh, pupillary light reflex and i started reflexes from the cranial nerve reflex to highlight this point only that cranial nerve reflexes are also there and uh, they are the center is a brain stem and their efferent and efferent are actually the cranial nerves so the pupillary light reflex so, so whenever we are talking about any reflex this is going to be applied to almost all the reflexes to all the reflexes actually in the reflex uh, whenever you want to define it how will you define it? it's very simple you you think about the stimulus of the reflex and you think about the response of the reflex so here the pupillary light reflex what will be the stimulus stimulus is light and what will be the response response is a pupillary constriction so basically pupillary light reflexes when light is shone into the eye the pupils constrict this is called as a pupillary light reflex very easy to define now as i said stimulus is light and the response is a pupillary constrictions so as i said that between the stimulus between the signal and the response is basically lying your reflex arc and how does that reflex is going to trigger the response is what is your reflex arc the physiology be behind the reflex arc so you can see that light is something which is a electromagnetic wave and it has been that uh, during this reflex arc what has happened that finally the response which you are seeing light is something which you are showing to the eye and response of the pupillary response which is pupillary constriction you actually can see so you can see that uh, you are showing light which is an electromagnetic wave but then you are seeing a response of a uh, pupillary constriction which is a motor activity so how does this reflex arc is being it is it is like that that it is actually converting one form of energy into another form of energy and then into another form of the energy so what it has converted light first into the electrical energy and then finally into the motor energy which is bringing the motor response so and this is happening just like less than minute because you can see this response in less than less than a minute so basically we can see that this is something a reflex arc which we have already dealt now we are going to apply this thing on this reflex arc to see whether all the components of the reflex arc are present or not so first thing is a receptor so since the stimulus here is the light 
and the sense organ here is the photoreceptor. Okay, now what is the effector? Effector here is the spinter pupillae, which is actually a smooth muscle. So, spinter pupillae of the iris is actually controlling the diameter of the pupil. So, when they contract, the diameter of the pupil reduces, which is called, which is our response, which is a pupillary constriction. So, here comes the response. Okay, now we have to fill in between gap. So, efferent here is the optic nerve as I already told optic nerve and the optic tract both of them are going to be the f neuron and this is like this is the cell body is going to be present in the ganglion cell okay then uh, the the uh, efferent is something which is a parasympathetic fibers and the center is going to be your midbrain that is a part of a brain stem and your synapses there is there is no one synapse there is actually more than one synapse so to understand this part like this part efferent efferent center and the synapses we just go to the next diagram because this diagram is not sufficient to explain so this is a diagram of a pupillary light reflex so let's start to understand what is the pathway of the pupillary light reflex so here you have shown the light okay and you are getting you are going to note the response also, also which is pupillary constriction so i am just writing pc so here the light has been followed they, they here there is a photoreceptor present on the retina there will be bipolar cells and ganglion cells and their exons are going to form the optic nerve so here the optic nerve is there and if suppose this is right eye okay if this is right eye this will be the right optic nerve so this is right optic nerve now this is optic chiasma optic chiasma where there is a crossing over of the fibers so here the light has been fault now the optic nerves are carrying the signal of this light so some of the fibers which are the nasal fibers they have crossed and come to the opposite side optic tract that is the left optic tract so this is left optic tract the nasal fibers of the right eye has caved into the left optic tract and this is the which tract right optic tract which is taking the signal from the temporal fibers which is basically the temporal fibers are running in the uh, right optic tract okay so now we can see here like this is now what is efferent here is we can see is the optic nerve okay so this is the optic nerve now optic nerve has crossed in the optic chiasma and it is being running in the optic tract so optic tract is also the efferent because it's because it has it hasn't reached the center now the optic tract here this optic tract has reached the which part the midbrain which is the center where the synapses are going to be happen okay now this optic tract is going to form the synapse its first synapse with the pretectal nucleus so this is the pretectal nucleus so first synapse with the pretectal nucleus now the fibers from the pretectum is going to go to the nucleus which is the this nucleus that is the ed ed uh, vestibal nucleus okay which is a motor nucleus of oculomotor nerve Okay, now from here what is happening, the efferent is going to be arise. So, this is the efferent, okay, which is arising from the antigen vestibule nucleus. So, first there is parasympathetic pleganglionic fibers. So, this is parasympathetic pleganglion fibers synapsing in the ciliary ganglion and then there is a post ganglionic parasympathetic fibers which are going to the effector which is what your spinter pupillary of the iris which will contract and then the response is going to come so that this is what is your pupillary light reflex pathway so i repeat again that the light is going to be fall on the uh, eye then the photoreceptors are going to transduce it. the optic nerve is something which is the efferent okay the optic tract is there then the center has came which is the midbrain it is going to form its first synapse in the pretectal nucleus 
then the fibers are going to be project to the adhesion vestibule nucleus then the efferent are going to be arise from there that is the pre ganglionic parasympathetic fibers and the post ganglionic parasympathetic fibers to the sphincter pupillary of the iris to cause a pupillary constriction now there are more details to this okay so we add those details now what is happening here that you can see here there is bilateral projection from the retina to the pretectum so here i said that the, the fibers they have from the op right optic nerve this is right optic nerve so from the right optic nerve because light has been shown to the right eye so from the right optic nerve the nasal fibers they have came to the left optic tract and the temporal fibers they are actually continuing on the right optic tract so this right optic tract is going to the right pretectal nucleus and this left optic tract is going to the left pretectal nucleus so even when the stimulus is being shown to the right eye the response has been gone to both sides of the pretectum that is to the to both of the pretectum that is there is bilateral projection from the retina to the pretectum now from the pretectum also like if this right pretectum is you can see this right pretectum is going to send projection to the right adhesion vestibule nucleus as well as to the left adhesion vestibular nucleus so there is bilateral projection from the pretectal nucleus as well similarly this left is also going to send the fibers on the right and on the left side so you can see that there is bilateral projection from the retina and there is there is bilateral projections from the retina and there is bilateral projections from the pretectal nucleus as well so each adhesion vestibular nucleus is receiving input from the right pretectal nucleus as well as from the left pretectal nucleus and similarly for this also so now this is what is happening here so now as a consequence what is happening the but you can see the efferent so this is the efferent now the uh, from the right adhesion vestibular nucleus the right parasympathetic fibers are going to the right eye which is going to bring the response in the right eye and from the left the response is going to the left eye so in response when you are showing the right light to the right eye the response which is uh, the response which is the response which is your pupillary constriction is not only going to come on the right eye but also on the left eye and this is explained by these points that there is bilateral projections from the retina to the pretectum and bilateral projections from the pretectum to ipsilateral and contralateral adjacent vestibular nucleus so when you are showing the light to the right eye the response is going to come in the right eye which is the direct pupillary reflex and when you are showing light to the right eye and the response is also coming on the left eye that is called as a indirect or the consensual light reflex so both of these things can be explained by the pathway so when you are going to do the light reflex in a patient you are going to see by throwing the light first on the one of the eye you can see if this is the right eye in that case the response is coming in the right eye also which is called as a direct pupillary reflex and there is response is also coming on the opposite eye which is the left eye that is called as a indirect or the consensual pupillary reflex so you are going to check first for right eye for the a uh, right eye direct pupillary reflex and the left eye indirect pupillary reflex then you are going to check for the left eye for the direct pupillary reflex of the left eye and the indirect pupillary reflex of the right eye so this is having a lot of clinical significance and how it is happening also it's very important now here you can see what is happening that when the light is being shown to the right eye there is pupillary constriction and to the left also and and to the same stimulus the uh, pupillary constriction is also happening in the left so both of these responses you can see somehow 
they are same the degree of the constriction of the pupil in both of the eyes is actually somehow symmetrical or similar and this is happening because of this two points which we have discussed because in both of the cases the input which is adrenal vestibular nucleus is at is receiving from both of the pretectal nucleus and the pretectal nucleus is also receiving inputs from both of the eyes in both of the cases so uh, sorry in um, the pretectal nucleus is going to receive the inputs from uh, right from uh, from the right eye Uh, from the right eye, and the uh, pretectal nucleus is uh, sending the inputs to both of the adrenal vestibular nucleus. And in the opposite case, when you are showing the left, when you are showing uh, the uh, the um, light to the left eye, in that case also the same degree of the pupillary constriction is going to be seen in the right and the left. So basically, this is happening because at the end the um the input which is going to the adrenal vestibular nucleus is same only, whether you are stimulating right or whether you are stimulating left. So you are going to get the symmetrical response of both of the sides. So a pupil light reflex is symmetrical between the two eyes of a normal individual so here you understand that the direct reflex pupillary reflex of the right eye is going to be same as the indirect response of the left eye okay and similarly the direct response of the left eye is equal to the indirect response of the right eye now what uh, what this is saying is that when you are showing light to the uh left eye when you are checking the left direct pupillary reflex in that case whatever the constriction has been happened in right and left eye will be same as that of when you are showing the direct pupillary when you are doing the light pupillary reflex of the right eye in that case also whatever the constriction has been happened that will be similar in both of the eyes so this will be equal to this okay so the pupillary light reflex is symmetric between the two eyes of a normal individual and in it has a lot of clinical significance so i repeated again that here what i want to say is that the direct pupillary reflex is going the, the the degree of constriction in the direct pupillary reflex of the right eye will be equal to the degree of the pupillary reflex uh, of the indirect Uh, pupillary constriction of the indirect reflex of the left eye, and the and vice versa. And here, what is happening is that whatever is happening in the left direct pupillary reflex constriction of both the right and the left eye, that is same as that of when the light is being shown to the right direct pupillary reflex. Somehow, these two points are same only, but you need to understand that there is. Um, the pathway which is uh, the pathway which is involved is also the same but the interpretation is important because this could help you in uh, understanding the clinical significance and make the diagnosis so now we can understand what is the clinical significance so we have seen what is reflex we have seen what is pupillary light reflex we have seen the pathway very nicely and we have discussed the very crucial points of the pupillary light reflex as well now we have to talk about the clinical significance why we are like so much discussion we are doing so whenever you are doing it in the patient suppose you are apart from like knowing the physiology you have to know the procedure also because as i said the adequate stimulus has to be shown to get a adequate response so procedure with the precautions is extremely important to elicit the response in the case of a reflex so if you are doing it properly and you are not getting the response in that case you have to think that they could be damaged anywhere along the reflex pathway so how that is going to be like what could be the possible site is that we can understand by this discussion so pupillary light reflex some the entire neural input from the photoreceptors bipolar cells ganglion cells optic nerve optic tract this is the entire pathway now therefore if there is any damage at any of these sites the reflex pathway will be affected and the pupillary response will also be affected so now we have to rule out why the response is not coming where is the site of lesion so this is showing you uh, the example of the uh, of the points which is being discussed above that if there is efferent problem 
then in that case although the response is not going to come okay if there is pretectal nucleus input may problem then the center is having problem then also reflex is not normal if there is problem with the effector in that case also there is problem with the response so there could be problem any any of the components of your reflexes and that is why you are not getting the reflex so we take the example to understand it so now this is a case in which what is happening suppose this is the left eye okay and this is the right eye so in a patient the patient has come to you and you have shown the light to the one of the eye which is a left eye and in response to it you have seen that the direct as well as indirect pupillary reflex both are present and now as a routine what you do is that you show the light to the right eye as well okay so here the light has been shown to the left eye and here the light has been shown to the right eye so now you see that the pupillary constriction is not there is not that much as it happened to the uh, above case where the light has been shown to the left eye so you can see that the direct pupillary reflex of the left eye is not same as the a uh, direct pupillary reflex of the right eye and we have already discussed that they have to be symmetrical in a normal individual so now where is the problem so here you can understand that when the light is being shown the response has come in both of the eyes that means the reflex pathway of this eye is perfectly normal because you are getting the direct path you are, you are getting the direct response the optic nerve is normal that is taking the signal it is taking the signal to the left as well as uh, right pretectal nucleus and then it is sending the inputs to the adjacent vestibular nucleus from where to their corresponding eyes the, out, the output is going which is going to bring the response in both of the eyes so this is also having the pathway uh, normal except the optic nerve because we haven't in the consensual pathway the optic nerve is not there of the right eye because the light is not shown to the right eye here the response has came because the light has been shown to the left eye and it has been gone to the right present uh, adjacent vestibular nucleus from the pretectal nucleus because they have bilateral projections now when the light has been shown to the right eye the response is not coming in both of them but here the pathway is completely normal so what air what air is the problem the problem is with the right optic nerve so this is showing the uh, the similar thing which is being done by the one of the machine pulverographics so uh, basically uh, you can see that uh, the stimulus needs to be the same in both of the cases for the same duration the stimulus has been shown that is the light is been when it has been shown to the right eye and when it has been shown to the left eye so when the left eye has been when the left to the left eye it has been shown the contraction amplitude was more but when it has been shown to the right eye the contraction amplitude was not that much that means their direct reflexes were not symmetrical between the two eyes so here you localize the site of the lesion which is a right optic nerve by comparison and by understanding the pathway so you have seen that what is the importance of knowing the physiology uh, what is the importance of knowing what is reflex and the pathway and to understand the uh, and to understand the crucial points then let's take the another example in that we have seen that when you have shown the light to this again we take it as a left eye and we take it as a right eye so here what has happened that this is having the response direct response is happening but this is not having the response so if it it is if it is having the response that means its pathway is completely normal optic nerve is normal pretectal is normal is adjacent vestibular nucleus is also normal and the efferent which is coming to it is also normal so here optic nerve is normal pretectal everything is normal but here response is not coming because here the problem lies not in the pretectum because the problem is lying in the pretectum both side will be affected here the problem could be lying in the right side adjacent vestibular nucleus or in the efferent of the right side so this is the problem of the efferent 
and this is a problem of the if net so these are the two things which we have seen here you can see there that uh, the uh, the thing is there that the direct reflex of the left eye should be equal to the consensual reflex of the right eye so that symmetrical thing is also not there and that is how you have come to the conclusion that the problem is lying in the efferent part okay so that is how you can uh, talk about where is the lesion another thing is the pretectal nucleus damage which is the irregular robertson pupil so that thing is already been discussed in one of the videos of autonomic nervous system so you can watch it uh, diseases of autonomic nervous system i will also tag it in the description box so these are the references i have referred if you want to learn more you can go and read in these books and we are at the end of this video i hope you enjoyed it if you like this video and it add value in your uh, knowledge please like share and subscribe our ch channel and help us to grow more thank you and keep learning